Hi, it's Claire from Comeback Brighter here. So I'm coming on to talk to you about, about what it's like for the narcissist, okay? Now, I think that there's a stage at the beginning of our kind of realization that that we go that we go through where we we really want revenge, okay? We really want to get them back. We really want to uh pay them back. We really want them to suffer, okay? And I think what happens when we're in this kind of uh, this period is, it, first of all, we're realizing that we've been abused. We're truly acknowledging how terribly we've been treated. And it's kind of a reaction to that. OK, so for so for however many years you might have just said, oh, they they've just got a funny way of showing that they love me or or they mean well, but they're they just they, uh, you know, they struggle to to, to show it or or it's me because I'm too sensitive, or all these like kind of excuses that we'll have for them. And then, then there's one day what happens that we go, oh, wow, oh, wow, wow, it, it wasn't me, it was them, they're abusive. And all these things, the laundry list of things that we've got that they've done that have done that have hurt us, betrayed us, devastated us, um, turn people against us, all these things. And then one day we just go, wow, that was abuse. That was abuse. Wow. And then I think the natural reaction is the anger and the desire for revenge. But what happens when we're in that place of revenge is we can think the narcissist has got it all. Because what will happen is the, the narcissist will, um, they'll effectively like, they'll conduct a smear campaign against you. So they'll tell everybody lies around you. And then if you ever reveal their abuse, then you've already been discredited. The, the, the people around you won't believe you because you, you, they've already been told that you're a liar or you're an alcoholic or you're suffering with mental health issues or whatever it is the story is that the narcissist has got against you. So they already believe them. So the narcissist seems to be surrounded by the people, whoever they might be. So it might be family members. It might be work colleagues. It might be whoever, whoever, whoever. And so we think they're happy, but that's absolutely not true. They are not happy. Uh, they are miserable. They are miserable and exhausted. And they're exhausted because their whole life, their, the agenda of their life, is to maintain this false image, okay? And that might be that they're a good parent. It might be that they're a good um, colleague, a good boss. It might be that they're a good Christian. They've got to keep this image going all the time. And it's really hard work for them because it's not what and who they are naturally. It's all an act. It's all completely false, completely false. So they have to maintain this, and that's really hard work because it's absolutely opposite to their natural character. So they have to maintain this image. And then second, what they have to do is they have to make sure that everybody around them believes that image. So, so not only are they exhausted from maintaining this image of being a good whatever they, they value, whatever they think um, has some sort of gain for them to pretend that they are they have to control how everybody perceives them as well and that's exhausting that means that they have to be like um alert all the time they have to be alert they have to make sure that there's no conversations going on with people where they're where the truth might be revealed they have to watch people and and you'll find that um if you've ever been the scapegoat with, with a narcissist that that there's something about us that makes narcissists deeply uncomfortable and they really got to watch you. There will be people that they've really got to watch and there's people that they've really got to protect from, from, from our scapegoats, if that makes sense. So these people who are important to them. Okay. So this might be like, this might be your child, right? They might, they might have to, like get in between you and your child so that you will not speak the truth to your child about what your parent is actually like, that they have to um, get, you know, they have to make sure that their image is um, 
is like um, strong enough. Like they're, they, they've got to make sure with certain people that their image is perpetuated, you know, that that person sees them that way. Um, but then they've got to protect them from the truth tellers, the people like us. And and they their whole life is spent in this um, exhausting cycle of the fakery of their image, because it's all fake and lies and acting and and not the truth about them whatsoever, and making sure that the people that they value, uh, and I say value because there's, they don't care about them, they don't love them. It's they in some way or form they get something from that person. They've got to make sure that they that they perpetuate that image to them particularly, and they have to be protected from any people that might come in and tell the truth. And they're so miserable. I cannot tell you. I have n I have never met a happy narcissist because they their whole life, their whole everything they do is about them being bitter, angry, um, jealous, revengeful, tearing people down, uh, about lying about manipulating people, about trying to control people, about their whole life is so deeply, deeply miserable. So miserable. And that's that's not from anything that anybody else is doing. They're not miserable because they're in a particular circumstance that's stressful to them. Their, their whole that's like their their foundation is misery and jealousy and bitterness that's like the foundation of their life and that's what they're working from all the time now the only time that i've ever seen a narcissist that's looked anything other than miserable or angry or bitter or twisted has been when when they've manipulated me into um, like they've provoked me, okay, so I've been angry. And the only time I've seen them has been, hasn't been happiness. No, it's not happiness. It is like a smirk of satisfaction. It's like I contrived this whole situation and she bit, and now I can just sit back and watch the fireworks happen, and then I can tell everybody what an awful person she is because she did this because she shouted at me because she told me to get out of, my, out of her house, whatever it is. <laughs> you can tell I'm talking about a specific circumstance and and that's that so they're either miserable or smirking or smug that's that's there's no happiness there there's no genuine happiness there um and and you so it might look like I don't know where you are in your in your journey but it might look like they've won it might look like they're happy now, they also might want to perpetuate the whole thing. If you've just got, got no contact, they might want to perpetuate the lie that they're happy. So they might be putting up all these posts on Facebook, whatever, wherever it is they are, where everybody's really happy and all everybody's smiling and even the nurse is smiling and it looks like the whole family's really happy. But that's one snapshot. That's one second. But 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 I guarantee you, the narcissist will not be happy and neither will anybody that's around them. Because the narcissist is unhappy um, and they bring everybody else down with them. So there's no happiness, there's no peace, there's no joy, there's no, there's no um, like calmness. They're just either in the throes of like a bitter, angry attack against somebody or they're planning the next one. Um, and that's not a happy life. So, so like I've seen these things, I've seen loads of memes and it's been like the best revenge is to live well or to live your life or, you know, whatever it is. And I got to say, that's true. It, you've just got to carry on in your, on your pathway. And, 
don't believe the stuff that you see on Facebook. Don't believe the stuff that you see on any social media. Don't believe even what people will tell you. And I don't even mean the narcissist. I mean the people that choose to be around a narcissist and not um, – they either they've got, like, narcissistic injuries themselves that they're not aware of um, or they have some agenda. And they're not happy and peaceful, happy people, nice, calm people either. So, and they get something out perpetuating the narcissist lies and image and everything else that they do. So, so even if someone comes up to you and says something, oh, like so and so, so happy since they've not seen you or something, or makes you feel like that. You know, sometimes people are much more uh, passive aggressive and indirect than actually saying that. It's not true. It's not true. It's not true. Even on your worst day, you'll still be happier than a narcissist because the narcissist is fighting this losing battle where they're trying to control the lies of their image and they're trying to control everybody else. And that's just not possible. That is just not possible. They're, they're never, they're never, ever, 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 ever going to get what they want. The world it does not revolve around them. And they're never they're never going to get what they think they're entitled to. They're never going to get the admiration, the love, the respect, the money, the material possessions, the whatever they want from people. They're never going to get it's never, ever going to be enough for them. So they live these unsatisfied, um, bitter, angry lives because all they see in, you know, is that that people are not giving them what they want. And <laughs> so they're striving for something that's that's not possible um, and never going to happen. They're never going to get all the stuff that they think they should get, whatever it might be, whatever they think they're entitled to. They're never going to get all of that stuff. And they're on this perpetual cycle of of demanding it, expecting it and then being disappointed that they don't get it. They're on this perpetual cycle with people, too, is I can control this person. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull their strings. I know exactly what to do and I can control this person. And, and then they do something. The other person does something completely unexpected to the narcissist and they're like, whoa, panic. What am I going to do? This person's out of control. They're never going to control the people. They're never going to control what they receive, uh, the stuff that they think they ought to get, whatever it might be, whatever's important to them. And that changes for the narcissist. For some, it's money. For some, it's public public image. For some of it, it's material possessions. For some, it's like like unending adoration that they want from people, from everybody around them. And that's just never, ever going to happen. That's never going to happen. So, so they are deeply unhappy individuals, deeply, deeply wounded, deeply wounded, deeply unhappy individuals. And I'm not saying any of this so that you pity them. I'm not saying this so you, so if you like right at the beginning of your journey and all this and you're like, oh, but they're they're on their own and no one cares. And I'm not saying no, I'm just I'm just explaining to you that do you know what? Even if you went back, even if you stopped your no contact or or thinking about the distance that you're creating between them, even if you went back, you still would not make them happy. Because nothing will ever make them happy. And all that happens is, as they're drowning in their black pit of jealousy and bitterness and anger and frustration and resentment and, and sadness and all these things, what they want to do is they want to drag everybody else down into their pit with them. That's true. That's true. I have. They don't. They don't want help. They don't want a hand up. If you're, if you're watching them and they're in that black pit of of all that misery and and horribleness, and you reach your hand down to help them, they will pull you in. Even if you had a helicopter and a and a emergency. I don't know what we call them. Those like uh, coast guard boats or whatever. If you had a helicopter and the 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 uh, emergency coast guard people out to save them in this black pit of despair, they would not be saved. They would not be helped. And then you come to the point where you're like, 
really some of the way that the narcissists, you know, like, so this is the whole thing, but they're on their own. Well, there's a reason why they're on their own. The reason is because they're miserable, they're bitter, they're angry, they're horrible to be with, they cause drama and chaos, they they hurt people, they betray people, that's why they're on their own. It's They're not your responsibility to look after. They are not your responsibility to look after. And if they're on their own, it's the consequences of their own actions. So I've had my rant. So I really hope that you understand. I really hope that you understand that the narcissist will. I don't believe they're actually actually capable of feeling happy because their world will never be what they want it to be. The world will never give them what they want. The world will never give them what they want in terms of like possessions or admiration or whatever. And they cannot control the people around them. They can't, and so they're on this hiding to nowhere. They can't. So I hope that you understand that and this helps you, if you, especially if you're at the beginning or at whatever stage you're at, where you're thinking like, oh, they won, they're happy, everything's great for them. I don't think for one minute that they're ever, ever going to be satisfied or happy or contented or peaceful or joyful, ever. But if you're going through the healing process, then you will feel those things. And it will get, it will become more and more that you're feeling those things. Um, and there, and it's, and there is hope. There is hope. Um, and things will always get better. I hope this helps. If you need me, please reach out to me, Claire, C L A R E, comebackbrighter at gmail.com.